1998, I was at KSC for a, a project, and they were going to uh, launch Atlantis two days after we were there. And I really wasn't told what to expect. And so I, we, we went out of the, the building uh, five minutes before launch. I had my movie camera and I stood right by the control tower. Uh, as I was filming um, and I saw the, lock, the rockets light up and saw it lift, I really didn't hear anything. About 10 seconds later, as I was filming, I started to hear this faint roar and then it got louder and louder and then the vibration went through the ground right through me like almost like an electrical shock and I was so blown away I probably looked like a cartoon character <laughs> and I, I let go of the camera and I was you know and I was kind of leaning back and watching it but filming it at the same time and I filmed I kept it in the 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 camera's view all the way to the point where you couldn't see it anymore. I was a launch honoree and I was lucky enough to go see uh, it for a second time. And the second time I watched it and I filmed everybody else. So I could kind of imagine how I looked like. The large crowd, everybody looked the same. Like they were all kind of, when the sound and the roar and, 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 all, and all that got there, they were all kind of blown away. And, Pretty cool. My special moment on the program, I think, when it all hit home on what we do is my first trip to KSC and looking at the vehicle assembly building it just made me realize how many people it takes to build the space shuttle and all the support and teams across the country or, that go into making the space shuttle fly and and supporting the astronauts it's it's amazing that humans have the capability to make something like that happen. And until you go down there and see it, I don't think it, I know it didn't with me, hit home. And it's just amazing what Americans are able to do as a team. So back in the, on the B-1 test stand, back when I used to work space shuttle main engine, I used to work in the turbo machinery combustion devices arena. And so I was able to kind of go to all the facilities, the different test stands. And I can remember on the B-1 stand, we had an alligator. He was, well, he was a good size alligator, 18, 20 foot. And they had a contractor that used to work on the facility with us. And she would, when it was break time, she'd go down and buy some moon pies. And she'd go out and she'd walk out the door and she'd yell Rudy because she'd named the alligator Rudy. And you could see Rudy hit the water from the bank across the way and he'd swim all the way over and she'd toss him a big triple decker moon pie and he was quite happy with that. So, although we're not supposed to feed the alligators, they've been seen eating some, uh, some things, so it was good. We were asked to go to Florida to get in the shuttle, to go behind the engine, to crawl up in there with a boroscope to inspect, uh, I believe it was impellers. And the problem that was on it was a thing called IGA, inner granular attack, meaning that when the thing was cleaned or manufactured somewhere, somehow, there was like a, a surface anomaly that was happening on our titanium hardware. So that if there was IGA, the company would have to remove the engine. So it was easy enough to take two engineers and fly them out to the, to the, to the hardware 
to look at the, the pump and we found there was no IGA. And that little flight, you know, made us like a little, we had our little hero moment, our little CNN moment, you know, that saved the day. But I was happy as a young lad to come to this firm and be given that awesome opportunity to be the one, like Derek Fisher on the Lakers, you know, to shoot that shot, to save, you know, save the day. Um, we were able to save, save the flight by flying out there, securing um, the date and the schedule, you know, because it's a lot to that. But that, that's my fondest memory. Since I've lived here in Florida though, I think one of my neatest moments was um, for SDS 115, I got to actually roll out to the pad on the uh, crawler with the orbiter. And uh, it was part of a vibration team and uh, there was many people and they were all on their computers and we had sensors on the engine, sensors on the orbiter to see what the shaking of the uh, one mile an hour trip does for you. And part of my duties was just to make sure nobody got hurt, fell downstairs and whatnot. I really wasn't a vibration person. But one of the neatest things was at about 6.30 in the morning, we're getting close to the pad, then the sun rises over the ocean. So you kind of forget where you are when it was, it was really pretty and then you stand next to a spaceship. That was pretty neat. About a year and a half half after I started working here, I had the opportunity to uh, go to a, a launch at KSC. And while at a reception, I had the opportunity to meet John Young. And I, I was able to talk to him for a while, and he asked me what I was working on. And at the time, I was working on a, an investigation team for the high-pressure fuel turbine blades. And he started to ask me very specific questions. Uh, the level of detail indicated that he was very familiar with the, the investigation. Uh, at that time, it became clear to me how much was riding on our engines, how important it was that we do our jobs not only right, but we do it right every time. Probably the most uh, memorable, memorable moment would be the first launch, uh, STS-70 with the uh, Lux Pump 14. That was the first Pratt Whitney pump to fly on the shuttle. That was July 13th, 1995. And that launch not only was important for us being the first product to fly on the shuttle, but it also was the launch that was delayed by the woodpeckers that were attacking the foam on the uh, external tank. So, we were patiently waiting for the launch, but it kept being delayed because of foam problems with the external tanks. So now they, they have people guard against that with sirens and horns to blow away, you know, scare away the uh, woodpeckers. I think what's so amazing about space and the shuttle and everything that goes into this is the wow factor of it. I think as a child you are wowed by almost everything. Everything to you is amazing, is captivating, is interesting and there are very few things that you carry on as an adult that you feel the same way about and I feel that the space program and space exploration are one of the few things, at least for me, that still captivate me, that still make me go, wow, this is amazing. Every time I see a picture of the planet Earth or the Northern Lights or even other solar systems. It just shocks me and amazes me. So I think that's the importance of space and how it makes people feel. It just makes you feel like a child again, that, that shock that it gives you.
Back in about 1970, and I was a little girl, my father was working on the SSME capture proposal. He was on the proposal team, and he worked incredibly long hours, as they all did. I think they were working about 16-hour days, and for a long period of time, I really didn't see him. I might see him on the weekends, definitely never during the week, because he would work so late. And there was tremendous pressure put on all of those people. Um, because they knew that with the end of the Apollo program, that if they didn't capture the SSME contract, that this division may not exist anymore. And one night, he came home with the news that they had uh, won the proposal, and it was a very exciting thing. And I can remember my mom and my dad calling all the relatives and letting them know that they had won the program. So it was a big deal, and that would have been around 1971, 72, sometime in that time frame. So, and he spent the rest of his career on SSME. supporting uh, SDS-1. Uh, I went down there as a worker, if you will, supporting, and uh, I had the foresight to bring uh, one of these big black briefing cases full of bugraphs. We didn't have all the electronic aids in those days. So in the two-day delay, I ended up giving briefings to all the dignitaries like Yardley and Weeks and people like that just to occupy them until we finally launched. And of course, uh, the launch was the culmination of 10 years of intensity. America's first space shuttle, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. I can remember my wife looking at me, and I'm standing there with tears flowing down my cheeks, and she was slightly embarrassed, and then she looked around, and everybody else involved was in the same emotional state, you know, so we just celebrated like you couldn't believe. Several of us ended up in the uh, Atlantic Ocean uh, as part of the celebration with all of our clothes on. My son, you know, he really, uh, he's, he's a funny guy, you know, he says, Mom, I just love to tell people that you work on the space shuttle program. And they ask me about it all the time. Well, what does your mom do? And, and does she go up on the space shuttle? You know, these little kids, you know. And he says, no, you know, she just makes sure the hardware is connected on the computer. And when that shuttle takes off, it touches my heart that I had something to do with it. And uh, like I said, it's very intriguing. The experience is, is almost uh, a little bit like Groundhog Day because every every launch is different and new. Uh, they've never been done before. That particular launch that day, whether it's during the day or afternoon or evening, uh, is special. And uh, there's a there's a certain thing that you feel. Uh, it's, it's both a, a visual experience as well as a physical. You you feel like uh, raising the American flag and clapping and at the same time uh, you feel very patriotic about it all and amazed by it all. Uh, those of us who get to work very close to the hardware and the people who work on the hardware, you are just amazed at the complexity uh, of the whole thing and the beauty of the whole thing. So uh, it's, each one is, is a special experience. <laughs> 